Hey, what's up guys? So today we're going to look at history of the atom. This is a really important topic because everything is made up of atoms. They're the fundamental building blocks of our universe. But not only that, it shows a really important scientific method, how scientists use evidence and experiments and build upon the theories of others. We're going to take a trip back in time to 400 BC and Democritus. Democritus says that if you took a substance and then you cut it in half and then cut it in half and kept repeating this over and over and over again, eventually you get to a particle which is indivisible. This means that it can't be cut up any further. And he called this atomos. This is where our modern day word of atoms actually comes from. His idea was ignored up until 1803, so 2,200 or so years later, when John Dalton said, yeah, you know what, he was right, that there are many different types of atoms and they're all still indivisible. But not only are there different types of atoms, but that they can bond together. And they do so in fixed ratios. So you get carbon, and two options to make carbon dioxide. You get an oxygen with two hydrogens to make water, for example. In 1904, JJ Thompson took this idea further. He did experiments using cathode rays and he discovered fundamental particles called electrons and he realized that they were negative. He developed from these experiments the plum pudding model and you can see this in the picture here. The plum pudding model is you've got electrons which are fixed in a cloud of positive charge. This is a little bit like a chocolate chip muffin, where I think of the cake as being the cloud of positive charge and the chocolate chips being the electrons. In 1911, some of JJ Thompson's students, Ernest Rutherford, with the support of Geiger and Marsden, took this idea further. They did the alpha particle scattering experiment, which we'll look at in another video. They fired alpha particles at thin gold foil, and they discovered that as well as electrons in the atom, there's actually something small, dense, and positive at the center, and they called this the nucleus. So their model was called the nuclear model. Not only did Rutherford, Geiger, and Marsden discover the small, dense, positive nucleus, they also realized that atoms are 99.999% free space. So everything that you can see around you is mainly empty space. It's quite incredible. A couple of years later, Niels Bohr, he took this idea even further. He took J.J. Thompson's idea about the electrons, and he took Rutherford, Geiger, and Marsden's idea of the nucleus, and he put them together and said that electrons orbit in energy levels. This is called the planetary model, because the electrons orbit the nucleus just like the planets in our solar system orbit the sun. So there we have it. This is the history of the atom. Democritus came up with atomos, J.J. Thompson said different atoms bond together. J.J. Thompson discovered electrons in the plum pudding model. Rutherford, Geiger and Marsden discovered the nucleus. Then Niels Bohr put it all together and said that the electrons orbit the nucleus in energy levels. They each built upon the work of others using experimental evidence. It's really important. There you go. Thanks for listening. See you all soon.